Hey guys, welcome back to another podcast of Road of Abundance. Today I have a special guest. His name is Harry, best shaman in Los Angeles and someone that I call a friend. We actually met through work. Uh, so I went for a session with Harry. He's going to tell you soon what he's doing, but it's a treatment uh, with energy and a lot of stuff. So Harry, <laughs> tell us yes. a little more who you are, what you do. <laughs> well, my name is Harry. You know that. Um, I lead people on internal journeys to activate their best self and live a fulfilling life. So how I do that is many different ways. Uh, I've been doing it for 32 years. Um, so it's older than me. <laughs> <laughs> Longer than you've been alive. There you yeah, go. It's a long time. <laughs> well, I'm only 27. <laughs> <laughs> so you guide people um, to find themselves and, and help them to realize their best potential and um, the energy that would be stuck inside the body. How I describe it and explain it is debugging and upgrading your human operating system. So we go in and we clean, yeah, because maybe there's um, a program, a habit that we have that could have been a survival mechanism as we grow up that's no longer useful. It's obsolete. So it's like an app running in our human operating system. So if you, you disengage that app and you file it away, then your human operating system can operate more efficiently. Mm -hmm. So it, it's deep internal inquiry to really go in and discover the parts that don't serve you, yeah, the programs and habits that no longer serve you. Because we have a divine mind and we have an insane mind. The insane mind is insidious. It's cunning. <laughs> it's tireless. It's the voice you keep hearing in your head. Yeah. yeah. And you can notice, you can begin to discern and distinguish between which voice that you listen to. Yeah? Exactly. And when we practice our spiritual practice, whatever that is for each one of us, we practice single-minded focus. Mm -hmm. Because we live so fragmented in the world that we live in today, we practice single-minded <laughs> focus and we live what I call, Mike, living vertically mm -hmm. in the now, in yep. the moment, in the present, which offers us presence. Yeah. So we can notice what occupies the... Away. Yeah, when I mean, we can notice what occupies the real estate in our head and when our mind goes where it goes, yeah? Because there are things that we're either connected or we're distracted. Yeah. And most of humanity live from the chin up, lost in thought. So what I do is lead people on the journey internally to become aware and to become conscious. To reconnect with the emotion, the heart, and everything. Yes, yes. well, we get to go in. You know, because most of us, we have two eyes that look outward. We have two hands that reach outward. And most of us live out here in the world. Yeah. And yet when we take a deep breath and we return and, and go inside mm -hmm. and we, we connect in, internally, yes, and then we connect and then broadcast and radiate out. That's the place that we're the most effectual, yeah, in yeah. this world. Of course. Yeah. And <clears throat> it's what I say all the time about meditation. It's like shutting down the voice. That's the yeah. first goal of meditation for yeah. people. It's like, um, well, like you were saying, vertically, it's like people should be aligned. And the voice, the ego voice, it's always trying to pull you. Like It's like your little demon trying right. to yeah. disalign you from <clears throat> your purpose, your life. Yes. And when we don't live in a present moment, um, like the book, The Power of Now that by yeah. Cartoli, it's like, you're always stressing about what didn't happen or mm -hmm. thinking about what happened and how you could have changed it, but it already happened. Right. So we forget that we need to live in the now, yes. basically. Yes. Well, we as human beings waste <clears throat> about 95% of our energy <laughs> because our insane mind is going, well, I'm concerned about that and I'm worried about that and I ought to do that and I should do this and I need to do that <laughs> and what about that? And then, oh, if life was just different than it is, Oh, and if that person was just different than they are, oh, and what about if I just had this? Yeah. Then everything would be okay. <laughs> and then when you have it, it's not okay. And then it's, well, it's another problem. It's another, it's another thing coming. Yeah. And well, um, I remember when I came to see you the first time, it was for a back problem. But I always know, I already know that most of problem, most of pain, not problem, most of stuff that's going to show up on your body Right. Pain, anything, it's related to emotion or stuff 
that are stuck and energy that didn't get released. Right. Well, we forget, Mike, that we're vibrational beings. We're, mm. we're energy in motion. Yeah. And we forget that our emotion, we have a thought that leads to an emotion and then we're vibrating on a certain frequency and then things get stuck. Yeah. And our mind tells us a story and then we get on a slippery slope and we start resonating. <laughs> It's yeah. true, right? We can all relate. <clears throat> yeah. And we, we get on a slippery slope and then we're, we're feeling bad. Now, mm -hmm. one of the secrets to life is just to feel good. Yeah. There's only two ways to feel. Good, good or bad or gooder. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's like yeah. I remember even me that I'm super <clears throat> spiritual. I meditate and stuff. But when I, when I'm not in my routine or I have a day like today was crazy day and there's a lot of thing happening in, in mm -hmm. personal life mm -hmm. and life. And I'm, if I don't stop and meditate and and just reconnect with myself, right. like I get back right. to old habits and 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 frustration and anger and then your stress. And it's for event that already happened. Yeah. So yeah, it, it's like a, always remembering. Like right. we need to remember that every day we have to do the work. Every day, <clears throat> every day we get to be in it. If you don't do, <laughs> yeah, if we don't do our internal work, if we don't go within, we're going to go without because life is an inside job. And yeah. then if we're walking around, we walk around holding on to lots of stuff, you know, mentally emotionally, physically, spiritually, psychically. And then it's like if we get frustrated and we're walking through life frustrated, we're, yeah. We're, we're emitting this we're emitting this frequency. Yeah. And then it hits people. It hits the, the universe. And then you're, what you're getting back is going to, it's going to frequency reverberate back to you. Yeah. 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 I feel it. It's, it's like when you are in a room and basically people are like, wow, this person is shining or there's something about this person and they want to be around your energy and they yeah. want to be around you. Or if you're in the other energy and you're sure. like frustrated and you're driving and life is just going to give you what you're asking for. So if you're like, everybody's a bad driver and you're stressed and you're like super angry, other bad driver or other driver going to react to that behavior yeah. and everything's going to happen. People yeah. are going to cut you. Light's not going to turn. So yeah, it's like you attract whatever you, you project in life. Yeah. It's a great reminder that <clears throat> everything is energy. Energy is everything. Mm -hmm. So when we clean our energy, what I talk about is the first thing in the morning, practice the three C's. The first C is get connected. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This is our solar plexus. It's right above our belly button, below our ribs. With breathing. So, with breathing. Yeah. Yes. You wanna, we forget you to wanna breathe. You want to tell us what, what you, like, to connect, what's your best breathing pattern that you would give uh, tips to the audience that is listening? Like, you have a countdown, something you say in your head, or you, the way you breathe, you want to explain it a little? Well, I teach breath work. So I studied with Stasnov Graf and, you know, it's holotropic breathing. So there's many different types. There's pranayama. Um, there's all kinds of different breathing techniques. Mm -hmm. David Blaine submerges himself in a plexiglass box of ice in the middle of Times Square. <laughs> he did, and the last time he did it was for an hour and 45 minutes. And he did it by just breathing. There's monks yeah. that go out and way below zero weather and they stay <clears throat> out all night from just mm -hmm. breathing. Breathing, we can breathe through anything. So, you know, it's being conscious of our breath because we walk through our day and you can ask the average person, did you think about your breath today? And it's like, no, you know? Yeah. So it's remember to breathe because it, our breath is always going to bring us home. So if we practice chest, belly, breathing, yes? So belly first or chest first, you would say? Well, there's different... Your Trains technique of thought. that you would that you would say like well if you you're going to fill up your lungs fill up your belly breathe all the way to your pelvic floor you can squeeze your perineum yeah. so you're pulling your energy down and up you're connecting in your solar plexus yes yeah so you can breathe chest belly breathing you can breathe belly chest that there, David Elliott is another guy here in L.A. and he teaches it you can do breath work with him and it's so it's it's belly chest. So you can you can basically find whatever yeah. works for you. Yeah. And I know that myself I like deep deep breathing most of the time. Yeah. The fast breathing if gonna if I'm gonna do a cold bath, like the Wim off, I do it. Well, that's called breath of fire. Yeah. So it's in and out through your nose, so your belly breathing, it's a <laughs> Yeah. To pump the energy and, and, and then yeah. you don't really feel the cold anymore. Well, yeah. you feel it a little when it shocks your body, but then it helps you with the breathing, like you said. Well, you said. can stay in it. Yeah, exactly. Right? You can't stay in it if you don't breathe because you're going <clears> to... <throat> yeah. But it's getting your energy to move. You know, then you're getting fire. 
exactly. you're getting warmth in your system, it's it's going to work. It's getting in your own flow, Mike. It's like, yeah. you know, that's the whole thing about this life, living in this dimension on planet Earth is find your sweet spot, I call it, but find your flow. You know, musicians call it the pocket, athletes call it the zone, you know, <laughs> yeah. writers call it the flow. I like to call it your sweet spot, but call it whatever you like. It's yeah. unmistakable when we're in it, when we're just in our Life flow. Life is flowing. Flowing. Yeah, exactly. And we know it. And then everything just <laughs> happens, right? Yeah. It's it, like af life happened like from you, but it everything just aligns. When, when, right. you're, when you're actually flowing, everything just aligns yeah. for you. Well, what that's a be... great point, Mike. I love <laughs> what you when you say that life is happening from you because it's true. Life doesn't happen to us. It happens from us because we're choosing our experience. You know, it's a choice to feel hurt. Mm -hmm. It's a choice to feel offended. Yeah. It's a choice to feel depressed. It's a choice to feel unhappy. You know, it's a choice to feel happy. Yeah, exactly. People always say like, that's like, how are you so happy all the time? Well, you can choose to be happy or depressed no matter what Correct. happens. You get a car accident. There's two ways of seeing it. Yeah. There's nothing you can do. <clears throat> it already happened. Now, what what can you do? You can yeah. still be happy and just do your day and this and that. And like, there's always two ways of reacting. And often people are programmed or they're taught to react the bad way, yeah. or the and not be happy or let this event affect the whole day or the whole week or whatever. Yeah. And then it's just a chain of event that leads to even more because yeah. that's what you attract. But after the connected, what would be the second C and the third C of your morning routine? So first you get connected, then you get clean with your energy. Just clean your energy, breathe, clean the energy. Because like you said, if you're feeling frustrated, if you're feeling resentful, if you're feeling anger, you're, and you're walking around with it, it's a certain choice that offers a certain result. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Happiness is the absence of looking for happiness. <laughs> if you're looking, <laughs> yeah, yeah. right? If you're looking for happiness, how can you be happy? Yeah. So it's originating. It's living out of a platform and a foundation of happy. So you get clean with your energy. The third C is get clear. Get clarity about what you want. Mm -hmm. Yeah? Because once you're clear <clears throat> and you have clarity, clarity equals fun. Then you can walk through your day. Yeah? yeah? And have yeah. fun like you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I had a friend that he had a saying. He was like, um, whatever you're looking for is looking for you. Because That's right. you're commanding life That's right. to happen for you. So I want happiness instead of being happy you want it so you're chasing it but right. actually life so happiness is chasing you so you're never catching each other but if you're living in the present moment and just breathing and manifesting it in your life then you're not moving and you let life bring it to you yeah and you can't really choose you just have to trust and and trust the process and often we want to choose on top of it right how events is going to end up in our life so let's say that i want to manifest something I'm go I'm gonna decide how it's gonna manifest, but that's not how it works. We just need to be connected, and have the clarity, and and then set our intention and let life bring it to us. That's so powerful, because when you feel good, then everything you become a powerful magnet, so everything just comes to yeah. you. It's just walk through your life. When I call vertical, mm -hmm. then you're just you're radiating and broadcasting. You're feeling good. The universe, there's synchronicities that just happen. You know, quantum yeah. physicists call it the quantum field. You know, you can call it the mind of God. Yeah. If you want, you can call it your, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The divine, the universe, whatever, you know, you're comfortable with. But it's unmistakable. When you're in the presence of someone that's in their own flow, it's unmistakable. Yeah, you feel it for sure. Energy is it. different when, yeah. when people are aligned. Um, so we talked a little bit about you have other stuff that you do uh, in your morning routine or like daily habits that you have, like health-wise, spirituality-wise. Oh, yeah. I have a powerful Tell morning. Me more. more <laughs> I have a powerful morning practice of gratitude. Okay. Being grateful and it's very want, important. Yes, and wanting everything that I have. I do want. you journal or you just do it in your head? I do it in my head. I have a book that I write in for sure, and it's very powerful to write things down. Yeah. Um, I have a practice of meditation, of breath work, of stretching. You know. You do it daily yoga, or yoga daily. Absolutely. You it's hear that, guys? Daily. Daily. It's important. You've been doing it for yeah. over 30-something years, and you still do it daily, and oh. you still see the power every day. You cannot not do it. Yeah. If you want, it's like a singer. You can, you must sing every day. Yeah. If you play tennis, you must play tennis. If you play basketball, you play basketball, <sighs> mm -hmm. right? If you write, you <clears throat> write. And people are going to be like, oh, well, daily, it's a waste of time, this and that. But actually, what I notice is 
like you said, when you're connected and everything, you just have to trust that life will happen. So basically, you're saving time because in fifth dimension, there's no timeline. There's no what we think about past, present, future. Correct. Everything is the same timeline. So when you take time to connect with yourself and meditate, there's no more timeline like waiting for this to happen. It can Life will make it happen. And it could surprise you the way that it does it. But yeah. you'll be like, wow, I just skipped like one year of work because I was connected. Right. And people call it luck. I like to call it like being in the flow. Like, like you yeah. said, it's like you did the work before and you're doing it daily. Well, luck is when preparation meets opportunity. Mm -hmm. You know, in, in consciousness, there is no time or space. And if we're not living in trust, <clears throat> like you said, w w what are we doing if we're mm -hmm. not living in trust? Yeah. I mean, we, we forget how much we live in trust. We get in cars that are three to 6,000 pounds of metal. We drive down the road and we trust that that other person <laughs> is going right? yeah. to stay in their lane. <clears throat> yeah. And we forget people get, you know, like fear of the unknown. We live in the unknown every day. We yeah. don't know about tomorrow. We don't know about tomorrow. There's more death, I think, in car accident than a lot of other stuff that we're scared of. But oh. we take the car every day and we don't care. Like, because we forget. Yeah, we forget. We just trust. And we that, just trust. that's what people, actually, they forget to trust on what's really important and matters. What really matters. Yeah. Um, so any other, like, healthy habits you have? I know that you're like me. Uh, you're very specific with your water that you drink. So you have... Yeah. A machine that cleans your water plus you like uh, there's a certain type of water that you like to drink um, if you want to talk about that a little or well like, not everybody's, it's very important the water with that we drink because 75% I have, of our body yeah as adults yeah it's in and water holds an energy so every thought that we're thinking creates form on some level so we're downloading into our our bodies into the our the water in our bodies of a frequency, a vibration. So um, it's like Dr. Mashirimoto, who had the water crystals. He did the experiment with water crystals where he took and had people stand around and, and say, you know, play beautiful music and yeah. say, I love you, you know. And how the water reacted. And, yeah, and I saw, He froze I saw the it. water and he had a special camera and um, he took pictures of the water and the crystals were like beautiful and, you know, perfectly <laughs> formed. And he had other water that he played like metal heavy metal and, music. Yeah, right? I've seen you, it. Yeah. And then they said, you know, all hey, disturbed the water was. Yeah. Like, yeah. And it was deformed. So it matters. And um, yeah, water is very important. I drink wife water, which is it's made, you know, there's only three places in the world that they make it. Russia, Romania. Um, but it's it's deuterium depleted. So it really, they went to places in the world where people live the longest and they found Siberia was where people live the longest and they found that their water was deuterium depleted. It's a whole thing, but you, <laughs> ha <laughs> you have to be a ninja to do it and it's expensive and, but you know, I do it because but I do everything like, possible. There's a machine like, um, like the Keegan water or uh, tie -in. I have tie -in, you have Keegan. Yeah. Uh, but those machines are a good investment. It's like sure. you can take a loan. It's like 50 bucks a month. If you can invest 50 bucks or 100 bucks a month on your health, I mean, water is what you drink the most. And I see a major difference when I drink clean oh, water yeah. versus when I drink like even the cheap bottle water is not going to hydrate you. But when you actually drink those kinds of water, you feel really hydrated and yeah. like it's easier to be in your moment, in your flow. Well, look at your skin. Yeah. You can always tell you're hydrated. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You can tell when a person is drinking water and it's, <laughs> it, yeah. Yeah. It's intercellular and outer cellular water so that we're hydrated properly. Yeah. I, I mean, I do all kinds of things. <clears throat> the Kanga machine is really good. The thing about the Kanga machine, the most important thing it does, I have an extra filters on it. So it really filters the water because our tap water in LA is. It's terrible. It's yeah. terrible. But it filters the water and then it. It adjusts the pH, and it runs it across seven platinum-coated titanium plates, so it, it puts oxygen in the water, it puts hydrogen in the water. The most important thing that it does is it puts energy in the water. It's like, think of a mountain stream yeah. flowing down over the rocks in the sunlight. It's, it's full of life force. Yeah. And that's what we want the most is life force. We want yeah, exactly. food with food. I, I talk about, Mike, is I adhere to four things. Make sure that what you're putting in your mouth is good. 
that it's full of life force, that it's full of energy because it's, we're feeding us. It's like putting gas in your car, yeah. you know, and our bodies are miraculous. If you study our bodies medically, it's miraculous when we put food in that it can turn into fuel for us and yeah. activate the ATP molecules. So eat well, sleep well, make sure you're sleeping. Mm -hmm. Yeah. A lot of people forget. Yeah. Too much hustle, too little sleep. Well, life gets out of balance sometimes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it, it, what are we doing all the hustle for if we're not enjoying our life every yeah. day? So sleep well, exercise, make sure you pump your blood and do your spiritual practice. So it's the four things that I adhere to that really creates balance in one's life. In your daily habits. Yeah. That's cool. Um, other question I would have for you, what's your, your favorite book? If you have two that are like equal, you can give two. But if you could give one wow. book as a gift, wow, put you in the spot right now. Yeah, that's a tough question. I mean, I have so many. Um, you can choose one or two. You know, I mean... Go with the Dave, feeling. David Hawkins, I mean, Dr. Joe Dispenza, I mean... They're, 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 choose they a book. A, you can name two. Eckhart Tolle, I mean... Well, The Untethered Soul is really good. Oh, so good. So I'm reading good. it right now. Oh, it's so good. By Michael Singer. Singer, yeah. So um, good. Power versus Force, David By, Hawkins. Oh, it, was, it was so hard to read. Oh, my God. It's hard to read. Oh, my God. It's so terrible, especially as yeah. a French person reading in English. And then I was like, wow, it's very, com like, I felt like I talked about this book in another podcast. And I was like, it's actually a book that you can read a whole page. Yeah. That means nothing. Right. Nothing. And then you're like, well, I'm not sure if I missed something or it's just the way that he wrote the book. So it yeah. aligned with his um, energy scale. Yeah. Um, oh, let, let's talk about the energy scale. I would scale. say that the, 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 yeah, let's talk about it. But uh, The Course in Miracles is one of the most. Course the, in Miracles? Course in Miracles. I who, mean, it's. Who, who's the author? It doesn't, it doesn't even list the author on the book. I mean, oh it was God. written by Helen. <clears throat> Um, and she would, she worked in finance in New York and she would go to work. She would channel in the morning and write the book and she would go to work and come back and pick up right where she left off. So she totally channeled the book Oh, okay. and it's, it's like, it's thick, like a Bible. It's got really oh thin pages. And if you, ha if you try and read the book and if you haven't thrown it up against the wall at least twice, you're not reading the book because yeah. it's amazing. It's like and power Dave versus force. Was, so I wanted to throw yeah. that book. <laughs> yeah. Well, David Hawkins talks about it in Power Versus Force oh, because yeah? he says, yeah, because he, he <clears throat> calibrates everything in life. And so yeah. the Course in Miracles calibrates really high. So let's deep dive into this book since you brought it. Like, um, let, Let's talk about the scale. So it's a scale from zero to 1,000 if you want to talk a little bit about it and I'll add my two cents on it. Well, I mean... David Hawkins calibrated where we live as humanity and in consciousness, mm -hmm. where Jesus lived in consciousness, uh, books, you know, he, he calibrates everything, everything. Yeah. yeah. Like he kind of invented the scale of, and, and for people that don't know, basically negative emotion, like hate, jealousy, and all those emotion that are, um, not good for your soul and energy are going to calibrate between, well, under 200. Right. And then it goes from 50 to 125 to 150. And I think at 175, 75, you have ego. And like when you're money driven and ego and stuff, you're still in the negative, but you're right. really close to making it. And then if you talk about love, gratitude and stuff, you calibrate between 400 to 600. And in the book, they say there's only six, seven people that are higher than 600 energy on the planet right now. Yeah. So it's really powerful. Like, it's Very. just to understand that when we want to manifest and be connected, we should be in those um, grateful emotion, which I like that you brought it that in your morning routine, you do the grateful journal, which right. I was doing. I didn't do it. Uh, confessing a sin. I, I was in my routine for with the move out and all that stuff. I, I it's it no excuses. I just didn't do it. Um, but being in your gratitude every morning and when I read my page every day, that's why I tell people 10, 15 page a day of books and then you do your gratitude and stuff. And what I like about reading is it make my mind go still, yeah. like vertical, because yeah. I think about nothing but the book. Yeah. And yeah. if I catch myself thinking, I go back to the book and then I can do gratitude, meditate and that, that yeah. kind of stuff. And it's very powerful to combine it. 
Well, you're practicing single-minded focus. Yeah. That's the thing. It's called singularity. So when we can live our life, let's say we wake up in the morning and we have 12 things to do on our list. We have a list, a to-do list. We have 12 things to do. You know what happens to most of us as human <clears throat> beings? We get overwhelmed. Yeah. Now, overwhelm is really just resistance to what's in front of us. So we get overwhelmed and then we lay on the sofa and we can't do anything. <laughs> we don't do shit. Yeah. Right? We just lay there and go, oh. We watch TV. We, right. We, we do we, everything. We play game. <laughs> to avoid. Yeah. You know. But then if we just take the first thing on the list and we practice single-minded focus and give it our focus, before we know it, we've So I always achieved... put sex first on the list. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, that, yeah. That's the most that's, important that's thing. That's you start motivating. That's the most the important. <laughs> <laughs> no, but... Well, but, you're from Canada. <laughs> yeah, You're exactly. from Canada. You're much more open than we are uh, here in no, America. But, um, yeah, I feel you. So I had days like that, that the list just <laughs> seems so big that you, you do nothing. You're like, okay, I, I should do nothing because you can't just get started. But if you do get started, you create momentum. That's right. That's why having That's right. your, your routine in the morning, like yes. you said, your, your, your good stuff routine yeah. um, is going to get you on the right track to start your day yes, and gets you in the moment. Yeah. And something I do sometimes that is not good is I jump on social media or on stuff that triggers pattern instead of doing those uh, behavior. And I notice it that my day doesn't flow as much when I do it. I'm not as connected. Right. Well, we don't want to take our phones to bed and we don't want to pick up, up our phones yeah. when we wake up. We want to give ourselves a half an hour, an hour to wake up into the day and do mm -hmm. our practice, and then you can yeah. pick up your phones. But, but you know, most of us in, in the Western world that we live in here today... We just pick up the phone. We just, we're just go. Just I know go. it, and I still do it. Some, like, I still, there's morning that I turn off my alarm, or, like, and then I, oh, I'm just going to check real quick, and then you get sucked oh, in, in sucked it. In. Or you go to the bathroom, and then you just chill on your phone while you're at the bathroom, and then it just starts your day on the on the wrong track. So, yeah. yeah, being in those emotion is, is definitely the way that we want to go. Um, another question I would have for you would be, like, what advice would you give to your younger self or to people listening? Like, if you had one big advice that would change their life or oh, help them. That's an that's a awesome question. <laughs> um, the advice that I would give to my younger self was, is love yourself, accept yourself, and be confident. Confidence is one of the secrets to life. Because we're so, you know, when we're growing up and we're learning about ourselves, we're look at, learning about life, and we're so, especially those of us that are really sensitive, you know, mm -hmm. and our sensitivity is our gift as long as we use it for us rather than against us. Mm -hmm. Now, using against us is, is, is internal negative self-talk. Yeah. You're so, not good enough, you're not right, this enough, you're, not, right. you're ugly, like yeah. all those bad talk. Yeah, yeah you'll, you'll never be loved, you know, you're not good enough. And yeah. So the advice I would give is, you know, tune in, you know, love yourself. It's why we incarnated here anyway, is just to Experience learn. Experience the journey. Well, it, yes, this is, you know, it's, it's the journey, it's not the destination. It's like we're, we're so focused on, well, make money, get the Tesla, you know, get the lover, get the That's house, what they want get us the bank to focus account. On. Yeah. And then what? I mean, you know, anybody who thinks money will make them happy has never had money yeah. because it's all about consciousness. It's not about the money. Money's just an energy and it's beautiful. And when we can use it with be for exactly. beautiful, beautiful things. It, it brings your, um, your flaws or your, your strength up. Like the more money you have, It, people say change people. It doesn't because if you're a good person, you're just going to be even better. Like Correct. sharing the money, sharing the energy, Correct. Uh, creating project that, that yes. do goods for the life. But yes. if you're actually an asshole, oh, it's going to make it's, you a big yeah, asshole. Yeah, it's going to make you a big one, even oh, yeah. pretentious one and stuff. So yeah, <laughs> like people are like, ah, oh, it changes and this and that. No, it just expose you. It, well, That's it just what accelerates it whatever's yeah. there. Exactly. Yeah. Um, If you would think like of, because we all have failure, like, and when we were, when I was saying back before, I was saying that sometimes we want life to happen the way that we want it. So, right, right. we're going to choose how it's supposed to happen for us. But right. this often leads to failure that we think it's failure or something negative. Let's say I want this apartment. I want it so bad. 
but what I'm manifesting is actually something even better. Right. But I'm so focused that I think there's a failure for business, for whatever, and then um, life was just getting you ready to have the best. So if you think about a failure in your life that you thought was a failure and then ended up being like a success or something good, like you have anything that comes to your mind? Well, I always say the quality of our life depends on the quality of the questions that we ask ourselves. You know, I mean, what if we knew that there is no failure? There's only choices. Mm -hmm. If we make a choice and it doesn't work, re-choose without internal negative self-talk. Without now, the ego. Right. I'm, I mean, I, I certainly did it. You know, I would say to my younger <clears throat> self and your beautiful question, like, um, you know, when I was younger, I, I would say I would I had a trigger that if I did something wrong, that I just beat myself up. If I thought I did something wrong or I missed the mark. A failure, like, I, like well, a failure, like yeah. an experience that didn't end up like you wanted. Right. Um, so, you know, what, what if we lived our life like there, were, there is no failure, there's only choices. There's a choice, you make a choice. If it doesn't serve you, then recalibrate without internal negative self-talk. So we can never get it wrong. We can never get it wrong. We try something, it doesn't work, re-choose. You know, that's what, I mean, that's what I would tell my younger self too. You know, it's like, that's... Try, just try it and don't, don't judge yourself. Yeah, yeah, explore. Explore for yourself without internal judgment or self-talk. Judgment is the biggest thing. You know, look, we have TV shows that judge. You know, we're judged about everything. <sighs> everything. And we're so used to judgment and it's, then our brain just goes to judgment and judgment and judgment. Yeah. I mean, what if we could live without judgment, you know, just letting things be and let, letting ourselves be. And judgment is always people insecurity and people, um, it's themselves that they're projecting on you. And actually, everybody's almost always thinking about themselves. So Completely. we shouldn't really care about what other people because everybody's just kind of thinking about themselves. Correct. So we just, we're scared of, the, of their opinion or thoughts, but in reality, it's You shouldn't care. You should just live your life. Well, what other people think of you is none of your business. Yeah. You know, and your opinion is the only one that matters mm -hmm. at the end of the day, because we sometimes we're very codependent. We like put we put take our energy center and put it over in another person. And we care about what they think and how mm -hmm. they feel. And, you know, and then we're outside of ourself. And that's being codependent when we retract that energy and put it in here and decide, okay, I, I can live interdependent. I'm choosing. Yeah. Anytime we hold our space, like, like, you know, you're holding your space in, in life, you're doing what you're doing. Mm -hmm. You know, there's always going to be people that like you and don't like you. It's none of your business. I don't care who you are in the world. There's, you know, it's just the way it is. And you can't pay any attention to it. Mm -hmm. mm. Yeah. You have to live life for yourself. Correct. <laughs> um, <laughs> <clears throat> I know that also sometimes you host journey. Yes. Um, you do it like, Costa Rica or places like that. Um, you want to talk Correct. a little bit about that? Well, yes. I mean, I was just in Costa Rica. I had an amazing time. Um, so I lead people on journeys. Yes. And, you know, in the world today, there's an organization called MAPS, and they're, they have FDA approval of, of, you know, clinical studies and trials that are leading people on psychedelic journeys because they're proving, and there's lots of press about it in the world today, that um, people with PTSD, with four or five stage cancer, you know, that are going on a, um, a psilocybin journey, or which is mushroom, MDMA, psilocybin. mushroom. Yes, it's mushrooms, which mushrooms are miraculous. <laughs> yeah. They're from the heart. They're from the heart. They open your heart. And it, it, it assists the, the, the neurons in your brain because they have a protein that blend with your neurons to help create new neuron pathways. So as you experience them, you're here and the medicine is here and it offers you a different perspective on life. So it offers you a different way of thinking that maybe you hadn't thought of before. So it works with you vibrationally mm. and gives you messages and you have aha moments and epiphanies and revelations. And then you get to incorporate it in your life. And there's MDMA, which is psychiatrists invented in the 40s to help bring people out of deep depressions. It really works because it blows your heart open. Yeah. And they're having amazing studies with it. So, yes, I do journeys and, and in, in Costa Rica. Like people that would want to do that or whatever, like what would be your, like 
you asked a few for sure. So like, what what would be like your advice in order to prepare for it? Like, like instead of just doing like, let's say someone would want to do shroom or whatever, like they have to set intention. They have to prepare for this. It's not just like, oh, let's do it and and, and whatever. Well, it it's been a you know it's been used recreationally, both of them. You know because it's called Molly or ecstasy and. That's something that's made in a garage that you don't know what so <laughs> what somebody's made it with, yeah. you know. Um, but it's it's known as recreational drug. For me, this is medicine that's used specifically for the involvement and the in unfoldment of humanity. And there's a there's a documentary and there's evidence that psychedelics have been used all through history, to for the involvement. That's really cool. Was the documentary? Yeah. You know what? I can't remember at the moment. But if you search, you can. You, you can I can search. put it in the caption of yeah. the of the podcast. We for can. Sure. Yeah, we can put it in the I caption. I can find it. Yeah, I watched it. I can't remember the name of it, but it's it's powerful <clears throat> because they they take you all through history and show you where there's evidence of psychedelics for the involvement the of humanity. You know, that's cool. It's beautiful. And can you give us like one or two like? Not testimonial or something that you've seen that happen that you were like that you think it's sure. beautiful. Sure. Like sharing a little that. Well, sure. I, people I, don't need shroom to do it. They can just meditate and do stuff. But when you lead people on a journey, you probably have like. Yeah, um, I do healing sessions. That, 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 that you know that has nothing to do with mm -hmm. medicine. You can do breath work and yeah. achieve a state. Mm -hmm. um, but yes, I mean doing the medicine there, it, it's. It's a, I, I have therapists and doctors sending me people to really lead them on a journey. And I can say that I did a pop star and he realized so many things about, you know, he's huge. And he realized how selfish he was and he realized how, how rich he was and how he doesn't share his, his love or he doesn't share his money with his family. And, you know, he could, he could do so many things. And then he realized how full of love he is and how much he loves people, and he wasn't doing it. I mean, a great revelation, you know, and he's yeah. in a position where he can help a lot of people. Um, I had this nurse that was sent to me, and she was very close to her sister's son, her nephew, and they went surfing together. He called her every morning with the surf report, and so he, was, he had a new job, his fiance, he just got engaged to be married. Everything mm -hmm. was like going well for him. So she was at work one day and they called her from the emergency room and said, can you please come down here? And she went down there and it was her nephew had been in a car accident and he didn't survive. Now, she was devastated. Now, this was 10 years ago. So her family didn't know what to do with her. She's been walking around with 10, 10 years with all this grief, all this pain, all this sorrow, and she felt like it was, she just stuffed it, yeah? She couldn't grieve. Yeah. And she felt like, Mike, it was so gigantic, it was so gargantuous that she couldn't even begin to go into it. So, you know, they sent her to me, and it it's, takes hours, you know? A, a journey lasts for about six hours, as you know. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and. I led her, I created a safe, sacred space for her and led her into it where she could begin to feel and go into her emotions so that she could open up that space because she was completely clogged, yeah? And she walked around with it all just stuck right here, yeah? And she was one-dimensional. And she went into it and she began to feel it and feel the grief and feel it. And it's, you know, it's important that we turn and look at our shadow or we turn and look at the darkness, you know, because otherwise we go through life with blinders on and we go, oh, no, 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 we're in avoidance. Avoidance yeah. gets us into trouble because we go, oh, no, no, I couldn't, no, I can't look that, no, I, and distract ourselves, no, I can't do that, no. And it's like a dragon breathing at us, fire. But the moment that we turn and look at it, it's like a smoke screen that clears and we're able to face our shadow or face the darkness or face our emotions and feel them and m move through them because it's okay to feel what we feel. So anyway, she completely let go. She was just like this. She was like, Whoa. and she felt her emotions and she went back home and her family <clears throat> was like, what happened to you? <laughs> you know, she was, was bouncy and, you know, full of fun and, 
Yeah, that's and, cool. And it, I mean, such a transformation. I see this all the time, though. And I'm, people can achieve it also without, like we're talking about yeah. the journey, but they could do it with meditation. They could yeah. do it with being in line. However, and, um, you can do it with breath work. Yeah. Yeah. And you were saying something that reminded me of the Untethered Soul, like the book, that the guy says that <clears throat> you can feel whatever emotion you want in life. It's just that they can't get stuck. So right. it's okay to acknowledge the emotion. Just don't let it stuck inside of your body. Just it is, It's supposed to be wind going through a window. That's right. I always say this. Think about your, your thoughts like clouds in the sky. You know, just witness and observe them and let them pass, but don't hold on to them. Yeah. Yeah. Because you'll have a thought that leads to an emotion. And then what happens to us as human beings is we have something that happens to us. We're walking through life and then we have something traumatic mm -hmm. that happens to us in life. And then we magnetize to the trauma. And if we can magnet and then we live our whole life. We can even identify living. to the trauma. It, we live out of the trauma. Yeah. We're triggered and we're traumatized all the time. And if we can magnetize to the trauma, isn't it possible that we magnetize to our divine self? Yeah. Yes, because we walk through this life, we experience many different things in this dimension. But yet, no matter what life offers or who stands in front of us, that we can go, okay, and we can stay breathing <clears throat> and stay in our flow without like anchoring in the trauma and living it out of the trauma. Uh, you, we all know people, we see people that just, yeah, they that, live out of their trauma. Totally. And they have trigger on everyday life. That's honestly, every I move day. every year. It's not the funnest thing, like moving and stuff, right. but it really helped <laughs> me like through my journey because every time I go to a new place, I can create new space, new energy. Yeah. And there's no trigger because your subconscious mind is very powerful. It's like 95%. And when you always live at the same place, the same house that you had all those trauma, it's really hard to get rid of them because every day you're triggered by something. Yeah. So Well, that's why if you can go, I go into people's homes and if you can, you can go into someone's home and really be with them and watch because our bodies were so used to programs and habits. Mm -hmm. People do the same things. We all do. We're human beings. We do yeah. the same things over and over and over. We're so, you know, programmed. Programmed. And if you can go into a person's house and really help them change their programs and habits in their own environment, and it's really healthy to change your <clears throat> environment. Yeah. For me, I've seen a big change. That's that's like moving in and out every every year is, is annoying, but I, it's a sacrifice I'm really, like it's a choice I'm ready to take. I wouldn't say sacrifice, it's just an action I'm willing to take because I've seen massive growth through it. And right. it was funny because my mom was like, Oh, I look at you, you're never comfortable nowhere and this and that. I'm like, no, I'm just evolving. Every year I upgrade because yeah. I make more and more money. Yeah. But on top of that, I'm just starting fresh. I'm, I'm cleaning. Yeah. And I have a, like, it's funny because I always end up picking new place, new apartment that nobody lived. It's brand new energy. And I come up with my new energy, new self, and then I do a year and I'm like, okay, now I learned. Let's start. And then I, I pick another place. And that it for me, it's been doing good, like, living yeah. with, with all those without all those trauma and, and yeah. trigger yeah very healthy you it's it's what i call clean energy yeah you live because the mind doesn't know the difference between what you make up and what you experience yeah so we can tell a story about a trauma and go right into it and be escalated completely like when you have a dream and you think it's true and you feel yeah. the emotion like your partner cheated on you in a dream and you feel and you feel hurt when, like earth when you when you wake up yeah. And you're like, wow, yeah. it feels so real, this dream. <laughs> yeah, it's crazy. Um, so, yeah, that that's super cool. A anything else you want to add? Like anything you think of, like tips you want to give to people uh, in order to become more aligned, like deep dive in their consciousness? Well, do your do your practice. You know, life is an inside job. If we mm -hmm. don't go within, we're going to go without. So go in, you know, become practice. There's TM meditation. There's all kinds of meditation. There's headspace. There's calm. There's, you know, meditation studios here in LA or, you know, just find an app or, you know, just meditate, just go in, sit on a rock, you know, and you, you've seen massive change, like from massive. people when you teach them and they start to manifest their life that they want. And, and like, even for you, like you've seen massive change, like oh, you did with a lot of people completely. If I didn't meditate, you know, I couldn't do what I do. But I had a client today, and <clears throat> he was saying he, he's done TM for years. 
and he's in the entertainment industry. He's done TM for years, and he said, "I, you know, can you help me with this meditation? Because I'm not like it's. I'm just not getting it." And I said, "Well," and we were doing a Zoom, and I said, "Well, how about if we just meditate right now?" And I said, "Let's meditate for five minutes." So I took him on a meditation. We wound up meditating for nine minutes. He did, had no idea it was nine minutes, but he said, "Wow, I feel really calm." He said, "I feel really relaxed." He said, "I was making." meditation too complicated. He said, I was making it into something, <laughs> <laughs> into yeah. something else. And it really transformed him. You could see his whole aura. It's just like he was relaxed because we live life in a very elevated state from the chin up. We're like, okay, <laughs> what about this? And I got to do that. And I should do this. And I got to hit that point, And I got to yeah. do this. And, you know, we're like, we're like going, cause especially, you know, we live here in Los Angeles, one of the biggest cities <sighs> in the world. Right. And this is the city where there's the most distractions in the world. And, you know, you can get distracted so easily. So if you don't do your internal practice, it's, it's highly beneficial. I think Miami is worse. <laughs> <laughs> okay. For you? Oh, yes. yeah. Miami is the devil for sure. Well, lots but of... Yeah, LA has a lot of distractions. Lots of <laughs> girls with... Cute... Lots of everything in Miami. <laughs> <laughs> Vitamins for your eyes. Oh, it's like lot of, lots of party. But yeah, LA is... <laughs> Like, you can get distracted everywhere, and, like, this whole episode was, like, to remind people to meditate. Yes. Be grateful. Do their, do actually yes. the work in yes. everyday work. You've been doing it for 32 years. You're still doing it every day. I've been doing it for a long time, too, and I still, like, I still have day that I, I miss it, and I, then I get back into it. Well, in Zen, they say, meditate for 15 minutes a day. If you don't have time, meditate for an hour. Yeah. Seriously. Maharishi Maharishi Yogi was the great yogi that, that he started TM med meditation. And the Beatles went to see him when they became rich and they became famous. And they were like, okay, what else is there to life? Right? <laughs> yeah. And they went to India to, to meet Maharishi. He had a great saying. He said, do less, accomplish more. Do nothing, accomplish everything. Because who's doing the doing? Be clear, it's not us. Yeah. We're the faucet rather than the water. When we just open up and yeah. just allow ourselves to flow, then we have the most powerful sonar because we have an, you know, a non-physical being that flows through us. So open up to it and just feel good. And at the beginning for people, it's hard to trust the process, trust life. But in reality, if you, the more you do it, the more you manifest and the more you gain trust into the process. Well, if we could transfer that trust that we already trust already, we don't view it like that. You know, we don't view that we're trusting just getting in the car. Yeah. You know, but if we think about it and transfer that trust to all areas of our life. And the other thing that I would say, Mike, is honor yourself. Honor yourself. Respect yourself. Love yourself. We only incarnated here to learn how to love ourselves totally, mm -hmm. fully, completely and unconditionally. Can we love ourselves? I worked with this woman today because um, I worked all day before I came here with you. <laughs> <laughs> and, and she was in an elevated state. She was like depressed and she was spinning out. And she's a great giver in the world. Yeah. But she can't receive. So if we can't receive the place that we give from is a shallower place. Yeah. So she didn't know how to give to herself. Mm -hmm. And if we give too much, we're going to become resentful. Yeah. If we don't give enough, we'll feel guilty. Mm -hmm. So we, we find that place where we honor ourselves. We create a container, a, a platform and a foundation to live our lives out of, to really respect ourselves, to honor our gifts. And we all have them. I say, you know, contemplate, use your journal, write down, what is my gifts? If I knew what my gifts were, what would I say? And really nourish them and give yourself a space to really nourish your gifts. We all have them. And it's so important. Yeah, it is for sure. It's so important. You know, you have many. <laughs> yeah, I do. I do. Yes, you <laughs> I'm do. trying to share. Well, <laughs> thanks you for, for coming. Thank you for sharing. And um, guys, thanks you for joining us. I hope you, you catch some of the good information that Harry was sharing with us, with his knowledge, meditation and all the good stuff. And I'll see you in another podcast.